think I'm going to get going here. It looks like we've got uh, most of our people here. So um, I just want to say hi and thank, thank everybody for coming today for our February Titan Talk, Illinois Wesleyan University Esports, a focus on competition, community, and career. Uh, my name is Hannah Krajewski. I am the event coordinator for alumni engagement here in Illinois Wesleyan, and I'm going to be um, the moderator today for today's talk. Uh, just a few housekeeping uh, notes before we begin. You are viewing today's webinar as uh, just an attendee, so you will not be able to turn on your video or microphone. Um, but yes, yeah, so you don't have to worry about if there's any background noise, we won't be able to hear you or anything. Uh, questions are definitely encouraged and can be submitted at the Q&A function that should be at the bottom of your screen. Uh, there will be a time at the end of course presentation for uh, her to answer all of our questions. If you're having any technical issues with your Zoom, feel free to send those to us in the chat function, or you can feel free to email us at iwualum at iw.edu. That's i-w-u-a-l-u-m at iw.edu. Um, and a recording of today's webinar will be available on the Office of Alumni Engagement's YouTube video uh, right about at uh, 1 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, we will be sending you a, an email with the link to that recording, as well as a short survey about today's talk. Um, I think that's really all I've got to say, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Cora Kennedy, the Director of Esports here at Illinois Wesleyan. Hey, awesome. Thanks so much. So, hi everyone. I'm Cora. I'm the Director of Esports here, and today's talk is kind of focusing on Illinois Wesleyan Esports in general, and then looking at kind of the aspects we do across our program. So I think first play necessary to introduce myself for those who don't know me. So about me, I'm Cora Kennedy. I'm the director of esports here at Wesleyan. Uh, formerly, I taught high school math and computer science and was also the program director at Glenwood High School for esports. I started that program in September of 2018 and ran it through May of 2021. I am also a board member and former tournament organizer for the Illinois High School Esports Association, the IHSEA. And that I am still serving on. I started with them in late 2018. And I also assistant coach at Naval North High School for the current Valorant team. Uh, beyond that, and outside of those responsibilities, um, my former education background, I have a degree in mathematics teacher education and a minor in technology education from Illinois State. So I know the area from Bloomington to Normal, and it's I'm happy to be here at Wesleyan now doing what I can. So the first question I get asked a lot is talking about what is esports, and that's a pretty broadly defined term. So esports can be looked at as, in its simplest form, competitive game. It's just playing video games competitively in a variety of forms. And what draws people to esports is not just the thrill of competition, although for many that is sufficient. It's also the other aspects outside of it. So for us, we focus on esports as three distinct but intermingled elements. Competition, where teams are competing either online or in person against universities or even other random teams who aren't universities. Like for example, the team on the top right there was competing in Skokie at the Battle of the Midwest Overwatch tournament. We also focus on community, looking at community events and team building activities and just creating an experience for students that they wouldn't otherwise get. And then looking at career skills, something that esports is slowly grasping onto is how there's careers you made in esports outside of competition. Well, I'm one of them. I'm a director. I don't compete. I'd love to, but I can't. And so we look at career skills, and I'll be talking more about those career skills later. Those are kind of our three buckets esports breaks breaks down into. So from there, I want to talk about what IWU esports is in particular. So our mission as a program is to compete in premier level competitions for collegiate across all of our titles. And we have numerous titles we play in. We want to engage underserved community, either esports or otherwise, with a safe, fun space for students to express themselves and doing everything in our power to you know, maintain that. And then help students develop soft skills and career things through a medium they enjoy to enhance their academic experience. Our goal of the whole program is, well, winning's great, I love winning, but students should be leaving their four years here as better athletes, better academics, and better professionals. And trying to develop students as a holistic person is a huge focus for us. So to that end, let's look at the history of the program. Some quick background things. First, gaming was recognized on campus as a student-run program in 2017 here at Wesleyan, where it was 
it was uh, given just a club status and started there. We then expanded into our first competitive space over in Hanson, the top four of Hanson, the current Office of Diversity and Inclusion sits. And we they had a full-time staff member and three varsity titles in 2018. And in 2020, the wonderful facility we have now was opened as an esports only building. We're on the edge of campus where the former uh, print and mail building is uh, with three full-time staff members, myself included, uh, four, 45 varsity athletes and five varsity titles. We're expanding to a six now as well. For reference, I am the director of esports, so I'm one of the staff. Our second staff member, uh, TJ is, or TJ Bjorklund is our League of Legends head coach. He also handles all of our marketing aspects. And Lorenzo Perola, our third uh, staff member, is our Overwatch and Valorant coaches, and same person. And he also handles a lot of the event planning we do. So our staff have our duties spread wide, and we do a lot for a program outside of just competition. And speaking of our facility, that's one of the biggest selling points of the program because it's just an awesome space, honestly. So we have a 4,700 square foot standalone building for esports. Tons of PCs everywhere, a space for virtual reality games. We have our new virtual reality headset coming in soon. We have a lounge where teams do video review and talk about anything they want or just relax. We have conference room. We have broadcast studio that students very frequently fill. We're currently broadcasting four to five days a week at this point. And we also have offices for myself, the staff and the student workers. So the whole goal is to provide a holistic space for esports that students can find themselves comfortable in and doing whatever they want to or can. So next kind of it follows talk about what titles we currently support. So at a varsity level, we support the following six titles, Rocket League, Smash Brothers, League of Legends, Fortnite, Overwatch, and Valorant. These are our varsity level titles, meaning they're coached and supported by either student coaches or staff coaches. We have myself supervising the Rocket League and Smash Brothers teams. Our Rocket League is coached by a professional coach who is contracted to us called Scholar. He's wonderful. Uh, and then our Smash Bros team is actually student coached by student Jeffrey Solberg, who is one of the top Smash Bros players in the Midwest. And so I am more than happy to support him as he develops his abilities in coaching, as well as managing a team like this. Our League of Legends team is coached by our assistant coach, TJ uh, Brooklyn. Our Fortnite team is student coached by uh, Parker Penn. We have our Overwatch and Valorant teams who are directly coached by staff member Lorenzo Perola. And we're trying to utilize students as much as we can. Like we have a student coach for League of Legends and Overwatch as well to help manage teams. So even as we're looking at just our competition oriented things, we're still getting students involved in every step of the process. Now looking at competition, one thing I get asked a lot is how do you guys compete? Because competition for traditional athletics is you all show up to a gym, go play basketball. It's not quite the same for us. One of the different aspects of esports is we can do it a lot of ways. So one of the first things we do that we love to do is, is bring students to, to land tournaments. So we have students who want to play in-person events across the nation. So we've played tournaments in uh, Skokie, in South Bend, in Davenport, in town actually with 66 games and trying to keep spreading over across the Midwest and just travel as many turns as possible. This picture here is actually from uh, Redbird Arena over at ISU. We play online with standard seasons and online tournaments. So our tournaments are generally, our seasons are generally eh, eight-ish weeks. And then they go into playoffs, run a bracket through there. Uh, we also played one day tournaments like our Rocket League team, which is coached by a guy named Scholar RL. I love him. Uh, he, he, they play one day tournaments a lot of times with our basically a double elimination bracket of 400 teams. You play it from 11 to whenever you're knocked out. And that's typically for us 11 to four ish, which we, we've made the top uh, seed quite frequently. So we play a lot of online tournaments because it's a wonder of esports you can play virtually. And we also play weekly tournaments in person. We have a unique aspect of us being in town here is that ISU, Heartland, and us all offer weekly Smash Bros. tournaments. So our players cycle through all of them. So we try to host weeklies in person as much as we can and get students playing in person because that in-person environment and feeling is very, very different from, from anywhere else. Now, looking at competition, we don't just compete, we win. 
our trophy case is getting pretty full. And actually that picture to the right is about to be outdated. I have three more coming from the fall. Our players are among the top rated in the nation and we are competitive in all our titles. Now, a unique aspect of esports looking at this is competition can look like a lot of things. There is division competition, there is undivision competition. And quite frequently divisioning is done by skill level. But we have some of the best players and some of the best coach in the industry to help us support this goal. Now, who we compete against is a pretty wide swath. This is a small selection of the probably 90 or so schools who play a year. Some of the bigger names like Boise State, U of I, Illinois State, Ball State, Kansas State, Kentucky, Wichita State, and so on, is is pretty pretty broad spectrum here. We play everyone. There are no D1, D2, D3 uh, coaches in, or uh, D1, D2, D3 programs in esports. It's just one big pool. So you play against people who are, who are large big name schools down to tiny 500 student schools. It is, it, it is a broad, broad, broad spectrum. And However, it works out. We play basically everyone. Uh, we we played a qualifier this past weekend that had like University of Florida in our bracket. We did, and it's it's just fine. There's no big skill divisioning in esports by school side. It's a lot about the players you have in particular because your teams are pretty small. Uh, League of Legends is a five player five player per team game. Rocket League's three players, and so a lot of it's very small team settings. So it's all about players you have. And this is just, like I said, a small sampling of who we play. Now, our program is pretty large. We are, as an institution, one of the larger programs in the nation for varsity players. We have 50 plus students in our varsity program, not including club or anything else, 50 plus players in our varsity program. And they're not all just from Illinois. We have 50 students from 30 different states by our count competing in 15 different majors. Some of the furthest states being Hawaii, California, Colorado, New Jersey, South Carolina, players are all over. They come here for Wesleyan and for esports. And that's one of the biggest things I'm proud of for a program is how broad a group we take. And looking at kind of some more diverse aspects of our program, we also have made time and space for people who are not traditionally endemic to the space. By that, I mean, we have a women's Valorant team who compete together and do practice and just hang out together. We make spaces for nights dedicated towards other groups who aren't typically in our space. So inviting people in who aren't typically in our facility just to get an exposure to esports. So while the, while the gender ratio in collegiate esports means that very commonly most programs only have one or two non-male people in their program, we are breaking that barrier right now with, I think, seven or eight. And so it's a huge point of focus for us as well as trying to bring in more and more students who would traditionally not see the space. Now, the way we attract students is scholarship. We offer scholarships for competing in esports. Our scholarship program is as such. We offer a $20,000 financial aid package labeled as esports that every varsity recruited player gets. And as such, that's how we attract students come to the institution. It is not a full ride, it's not a partial tuition. This is a thing for esports as part of a financial aid package. So it's part, it's coming from the financial aid office, but it is dedicated for esports. And we offer a million in scholarship yearly to bring students here. Because we are not NCAA associated, because we are not, uh, not instantly regulated there's no instantly involvement at all here we can do scholarship like this and that's the point of the institutions made is to draw students through this method and then outside of purely competition that's all been competition stuff so far outside of purely competition we also have a club program where we should invite students to come play and hang out and just exist in the space our space is unique in the collegiate esports space because we are the only program, one of the few programs I know, who leave our facility open to any student on campus. Esports or not, any student can use our facility and join Titan Gaming Club. 
Titan Gaming Club or TGC is run by myself as a supervisor and a student team of leaders who all lead the program by just creating unique experiences and fun things to go work on. And it's all about how students can just find something they want to do and do it. We also support club teams through TGC. So we have like a club team for Halo, a club team for Apex Legends. It's creating opportunities outside of just our varsity spaces. We also try to have fun. And while winning is nice, we also want to create memorable opportunities. So we try to create opportunities through team activities, traveling to in-person events, competition, friendship, and just doing things as a team that helps students build relationships that last for a lifetime and experience that last for a lifetime. This picture is from a tournament we played in St. Louis in July. And we're on, we were on stage, on the stage, being broadcast in the mainstream for our first game of the day. And this is our players because the game finishes on their screens before they finishes on broadcast. It's like a three minute delay or something. This is them looking back up at their own matches and just having fun doing it on stage. So it's all about creating experience for students they want to have. And we're not forcing students to be together. They want to do this and they want to find cool things to do. We also create inclusive spaces for all students. So this is a big focus of ours is trying to make sure everyone is comfortable and feels willing to do whatever they want to do in the space. We have a woman and non-binary gaming night we do. We're trying to host a second one this semester and it's gone over amazingly so far. So I want to keep doing it and these sorts of things. We have a lot of times our program goes through video review where they talk about, hey, how'd the match go? What I want to talk about here? What are notes to take away from this match? And that video review input is really valuable. It's an open discussion. It's not a lecture. It is an open discussion about things we can improve upon. And it's always improvement and goal oriented. Each student gets individual attention from coaches to find things they can improve upon in their own play. We also have been opening up our space to high schools. So the high school esports space in Illinois is pretty packed. And there are about 110 high school programs in Illinois now. One of the bigger ones in the state is my farm program, Glenwood High School, as well as Springfield, Naperville North, and Unit 5 High School in town. So I know the Unit 5 coach, so I've talked to him a bunch. We're getting his players in our facility. The bottom picture is from some of his players just playing in person in our space. That feeling of playing in person is unlike anything else that can be done. And players really speak to how much being in person helps. And for high school students who don't necessarily get that opportunity, they, they readily, readily seek it out in this space. We also try to get our team marketed out there and get the ability for students just to support the program and for out, people out to the program to support as well. We have official team jerseys. We have alternate jerseys, which I'm wearing our alternate jersey right now. We have hats, casual wear, mouse pads. The mouse pads I ordered are three feet wide and they look amazing. And so we're trying to do everything we can just to get students a way to represent the program on their own and wear their team with pride. And this is also open to anyone outside the program as well. There's links publicly on our Twitter and I can also send those later if you'd be interested. But team apparel is a really important part of our, our equipment and we're working with esports gear to make it happen. Because this that sense of unity it brings is really important. Community building wise, we also want to host community events more and more. We've hosted watch parties for various events. We hosted a watch party for the League of Legends World Finals, for the Valorant World Finals, for Arcane, and just bringing students to space to hang out and not necessarily compete, just exist. But competition is also nice. So community-wise, we're also hosting what's called Smash of the Titans, which is a 100-plus player Smash event we host in Hanson that draws crowds from all the Midwest to come play in person for us. So we don't just travel to LAN events, we make one. And our current Smash of the Titans is planned, uh, it was on break this past year because of COVID, but it is planned for this year on February 27th is our current Smash the Titans date. So we're trying to encourage players who are both casual and competitive to have an event that suits them. 
and just bringing students in to see Wesleyan, to see the program, and to have a fun time doing it. So Smash the Titans signups are open right now. I can also link those later. But it's a 100 plus person Smash event held in our very own Hanson Student Center and run by our esports staff. Now, looking at the academic side, we are, in the end, a university program. We are owned by Student Affairs. So my boss is the Division of Student Affairs. But that does not mean we are contained within that department. We make a, a effort and a goal to partner with as many different groups on campus as possible and find integrations and value for students from all over campus with our program, not just our own players. So to that end, we've been working with the film media departments to get students to assist with filming, broadcasting, content creation. We're working on a lot of content creation things right now as well. We are talking with computer science to create data logging metrics for us and have it be a student-oriented project to create data logging for our program, which is going to work out fantastic, I think, to help us find more and more to work with. We are working with psychology departments to do research on various physiological elements of competing in esports. It's not just clicking a button. There's a lot of effort that goes into it from reaction time, from sleep, from perception, from focus. And our players do find some of these matches grueling, just like you would in traditional sports. When we have a five hour tournament, being on top of things for five hours is mentally exhausting and players are doing the best they can to build themselves up to help our staff to be able to withstand those tournaments more often. We also participate in research quite frequently. Uh, one of our biggest and product examples is working with what's called Focus Calm, uh, which makes these headbands that help measure your focus level at any given moment. So it's cutting edge technology we use to help students find a numeric measurable data that gives you a score one to 100 about what your focus level is uh, and saying, hey, at this at this timing, at five minutes in this team fight, you weren't focused and we're thinking about something else and that would have won us the fight. And, and helping students take active effort through focus calm programs to improve their own focus has been showing measurable results in performance in game for us as well. So we're looking at a research oriented approach to help students unlock more potential themselves and do more. And then part of our community aspect is hosting summer camps. Now, me coming from, from teaching and from running scout summer camps for years, summer camps are an awesome experience for kids. And a lot of them really do reflect very highly upon it. So we run summer camps for our program. We pilot our summer camps this past summer with two sessions of our leadership oriented camp where we have ages, it was last year it was nine to 14, uh, where we do leadership skills, healthy gaming and doing positive things through gaming, but also just having fun. So we did like Among Us in Real Life here across the facility. We did cool team building activities outside. It wasn't just sitting inside and gaming all day, although it was part of it. We did more than just that though. And we also brought our students in to help. So on the left there is our student Parker, who is a fantastic student to help with, with these kids and was just a natural with them. And like I said, we partner with high school programs because I came from the high school space. I know a lot of high school coaches. And so we brought a lot of high schools into our space this year. We held a special one-time event between Naperville North High School and Springfield Public Schools in November-ish to play their uh, Overwatch matches from our facility for a day. And so we had all the teams come come over. We had pizza and 35-ish students in the facility just all playing and having a good time because their matches lined up, so we wanted to do it in person. And the kids loved it. They were raving about it. They had such positive things to say. And that group was fantastic to meet because for a lot of them, they never meet their competitors in person. That's one of the unique parts of esports is you know them as a screen name. I know this guy. I don't know if the guy is as uh, Joe. I know him as whatever his screen name is. And so for them to meet their competitors in person, the camaraderie they had between programs was kind of amazing to see. We've also hosted multiple nights where Unit 5 high schools come into our, in our space just to practice and play because I talk to the coach a lot. We've also had uh, the IHSEA, the Illinois High School Esports Association, Rocket League State Finals in our facility and held a, eight teams on December 17th to play all day in our facility 
to play the top eight of their bracket and find the winner for the state championship. And hosting these events in person means so much to these kids because they can see these competitors in person and they get this unique experience that not many other students get. And Illinois as a whole is one of the best states for high school esports out there, like by a large margin, because we have all the support staff, myself included, who care so much about the growth of programs. Now, getting students involved is the biggest thing I love doing, and we empower students through industry experience, because esports programs aren't just playing games. There is a whole host of things like coaching, filming, editing, social media management, broadcast, camp counselors, and any other needs that count throughout the year. We have our current student worker count is, I want to say, 14. I have student coaches, I have student production managers, I have student casters, I have two social media managers, I have a graphic designer, I have a video editor. And they are all empowered to create things either from our direction or just an idea they had. On the bottom right, our student worker, James, for our social media managing, we let him just create ideas and run by us. And he is such a fruitful wealth of ideas. And we post on a ton of platforms and he's been helping just set the tone and the brand and get get really in there and involved in creating our program's brand and brand image. And students have the ability to do that through our program. As long as they have motivation to do something, we're going to do it. We also create community leaders. This has been put on hold slightly because of COVID, but we're going to go back to it starting soon of getting students to give back to the local community. Uh, we're currently piloting and partnering with Unit 5 High School to host guest training sessions where our students, either in person or virtually, go to other schools to go coach their players. Because our students are high enough level and have a wealth experience that they can offer to high school players. We also want to give back community in service oriented ways. So like helping charities and developing students more outside competition than just in. If there's anyone who wants to partner with us, I am happy to happy to talk to them. I would love to get students involved and I want to make sure students are doing as much as they can outside competition is in. And our players attitudes reflect how much we're really doing. Jeff is one of our League of Legends starters and he's he and many other students have seen that with the methods and ideas we talk about through esports and what do we do outside just competition? and how they train, how they practice, how they think, how they prepare themselves, we can help students find and reach things they wouldn't have otherwise considered through just effort and time. So students do really reflect and highly value the program we have here. Now, plans for the future, because we're always future looking as well. We are planning to currently keep expanding our competitive offerings and do more and more cool things and unique experiences for students that they just wouldn't get anywhere else. Like we're gonna start competing in virtual reality games soon and looking at uh, Beat Saber competitions, probably Echo Arena, maybe Pavlov. We're also going to continue to engage underserved communities with a safe and fun space for students to express themselves. Like I said, our facility is open to any student at any time. We are open 8 a.m. to 2 a.m. is our facility time. And students can just swipe their card in and get in and play. And it's finding a space that students feel comfortable and want to be in. And then developing career and community opportunities for students. We're constantly searching and talking to new people to help find experiences for our students they wouldn't otherwise get. So like we're trying to plan a charity event right now. We're trying to work on hosting a bigger tournament next year. We're trying to find new community partners that I can get my students involved in and engaged in. There is no shortage of unique ideas and new things students can do through the lens of esports, because we are a large organizing body that students can find a home in, find, find community through, and then get involved through. If you'd like to contact us and contact me in particular, we have all of our social channels. We are at Ibu Esports on literally every social platform. You can contact my office phone there, email me at kcounty at iwood.edu. And we also just launched a giving circle as well that I believe also be published with this email. So that's my spiel. What questions can I answer?
I'll jump back on here to, to ask you a couple questions. And um, we had a couple people um, asking about just going over who the team coaches were again, um, especially the Rocket League. Yeah. You can just go through those again for us. So our coaches for Overwatch and Valorant is Lorenzo Perola, a full-time staff. Um, our coach for League of Legends is TJ Bjorkland, a full-time staff. Our coach for Fortnite is student coach Parker Penn. Our coach for Smash Brothers is student coach Jeffrey Solberg. And our contracted coach for Rocket League is Robert, I forgot his last name. He goes by Scholar RL Online, and he has experience with professional teams all over the board. So he has been a wonderful resource for our students as well. Again, an example of knowing somebody by their uh, user tag instead of their actual name. It's so common. It's so <laughs> common. When, when, I, I, when I came to university, that. I also actually asked students to, to put in their nickname in our server, their username dash their first name. So I can learn names because learning names that's is a great. Really that's a great idea. <laughs> uh, we had a question just about the uh, scholarships, just kind of a, about the allocation of those. Yeah. So the scholarship here is really a repackaging of the standard financial aid package it is not an additive scholarship as more of a relabeling. So we have 50 ish students in a program who have their standard 20,000 uh, financial aid package repackaged as esports. So the, and there's also an added, I think 2000 in there for specifically esports, but it's a repackaging standard of their financial aid package. However, through the giving circle, we just launched, I'm trying to fundraise money for scholarships. So I can give additive scholarships to high need or high merit players who I want to find. Wonderful. Uh, let me see. We have a question about um, what is the plus discord on the side of the Titan Club gaming? Oh, uh, let me find the slide again. There it go. Where did it go? I'm going crazy, I swear. There it is. Uh, so we operate what's called Discord. Discord is a messaging service and uh, social media platform that, that basically every gamer competes on. Uh, and we use our Discord to communicate players and our Titan Gaming Club has a home on our Discord as well. So the Titan Gaming Club has their own subset and do community announcements through there. Okay, wonderful. Let me get back here. Um, how do uh, game updates and patches interfere with practicing and, and competitions? So one of the biggest challenges or differences from esports to traditional sports is the rules of football don't get major overhauls every two weeks. The rules of esports do. Uh, some of our titles, like League of Legends, actually have total revisions to their to their their champion balance, their character balance, their game styles, their game rules, their new things, whatever it is, every couple of weeks. Some games like Rocket League and Overwatch are more stable, but some games like League of Legends or and Valorant change quite frequently, and so students have to work to adapt and and find new methods and strategies in those titles as they go on. And that's why coaching and having students involvement is so, so important is because students have to stay on top of things to make sure they are active and updated. Um, what alternate opportunities for Rocket League will be provided? Um, I think it says that some of these things that has been on the back burner and wanting to be able to stay in touch with what's going on. Well, Rocket League last semester did not compete as much because of schedule issues. However, this semester, they're competing more than I think virtually any team that I know of. We are playing in Collegiate Rocket League qualifiers and CRL playing CCA. We are playing in NACE slash CSL. That's on Mondays. We're playing in uh, NECC on Tuesdays. They're playing in UGC on Wednesdays. And they're practicing doing scrims on what, Thursday, Friday. I believe they're also doing some competitions with other high school teams on Thursday, Friday. Awesome. Um, can you go over how tournament winnings are distributed? So tournament winnings is a weird topic for esports because traditional athletics doesn't deal with winnings. Your school gets a trophy, cool, go home. That's about it. But with esports, the 
turn winnings are distributed to players and per university and institution rules has to be run through the student uh, or the business office where it is then dispersed to students directly through either a direct deposit check or they can pick one checkup. And it's generally distributed evenly among the players in the team when we're also going to be distributing it based on uh, amount played per player. But that, it, that's still a work in progress and kind of a case by case basis thing. Awesome. Um, will there be a focus on personal brand development for each player, promoting the players and teaching them how to build and maintain their brand post program? Yes, and you beat me to it. We're actually openly working, or not openly, we're, we're working on that right now. That is a program that's being developed internally, and we're trying to help students uh, find their own brand and personality. It's not something we're directly involved in, but we're encouraging students to look at the marketing assets we're doing and the marketing work we're doing and start modeling things off of that. We're also getting students involved on our Twitch page. We are a Twitch partner. I mean, we have a team page that I can put all of our students on and any student who wants to, I have a form on our Discord that students can go join our Twitch team page or go apply to join and then I will go, go process it. So students can get involved there. We also make a point to use images and work from our students like clips or their team picture in as much media as we can going forward. Uh, we had somebody that asked, what is literally on the computer, the computer students are watching, what do games look like for somebody who is more unfamiliar with, uh, with any type of online gaming? I don't have a quick slide of that ready, and that's more of a visual explanation, mm -hmm. but looking at our title list, um, our brands and genres kind of break down pretty broadly. Fortnite, Overwatch, and Valorant are first person uh FPS games or first person shooters of some variety, first person or third person. And they involve fictional cartoony guns and wacky characters like someone who can throw a lightning ball or whatever. Uh, League of Legends is third person kind of isometric view over the top, uh, controlling super tiny little characters on screen. Um, Smash Brothers is a side scrolling fighter that's been around for ages. The current iteration is in 2019. And then Rocket League is, as best I can put it, rocket-powered soccer. Car, rocket-powered car soccer. Uh, I don't have a quick slide of what the, the games actually look like, but that's you can look, look up all those titles and find what they look like from there. Awesome. Um, just a couple more questions. Uh, where do you see esports going in the future? Am I going to get lambasted on Twitter for this one? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so in general, esports going in the future, there's a couple ways to take it. The collegiate side is going to look more and more at creating opportunities outside of competition like we are, doing mm -hmm. community aspects, doing career aspects, and getting students involved outside of just playing. The professional space is always evolving. Uh, Valorant didn't exist a year ago. It literally launched July, or a year and a half ago. It, it literally launched July 2021 and or july 2020 and took the world by storm and games pop up and games fizzle out very frequently and so the challenge for collegiate esports programs and professional organizations too is finding titles that they can support uh that that aren't going to fizzle out instantly because there have been titles that have popped up on everyone's radar everyone played for two weeks and then dropped and so that's the challenge for us. The program is trying to find those. My biggest hope, hope, hope for future of esports is that there are more in-person events now that COVID is fizzling out. Hopefully, hopefully. Fingers crossed with that one. <laughs> um, are students allowed to compete in more than one uh, game or title? Uh, students are allowed to. We have some students who are competing on our Overwatch and Valorant teams okay. or uh, Fortnite and Valorant. So students can. It is generally discouraged unless they're very committed because the time commitment will get pretty large. Absolutely. Uh, what's your personal favorite game to play? Uh, right now, Valorant. I quite enjoy the game and I, I love Valorant to death and I'm coaching it for, for Naval North High School as well, so I love it. Awesome. Uh, and then lastly, where are schedules posted so um, people can, can watch uh, if possible? We so part of the issue with esports is we don't do round robin tournaments typically. 
Okay. So in traditional athletics, your schedule is set from two years ago and it's just fine because it's the same set group of teams, the same set, everything for esports. Most league organizers don't actually run round robin or set schedule. They do what's called Swiss system, which they think it's traditionally found in chess, but it's also a very common in esports where Swiss system, you play a week of matches and then next week you get randomly seated against a team who, who has your same record or as similar record as you do. So two one and one teams uh, face off, two two and zero teams face off, uh, and and so our schedules are published three days in advance per week. We we try to put out game day reminders as much as we can, and as we're going forward and trying to revamp our marketing right now actively, that's a, a topic I just saw flash up in our Discord before I went to this this conference or this talk is talking about how we can get uh, our schedules set and publish more frequently. Great. Um, and then last question, um, what would you say, what would advice would you have for somebody that's just trying to get into esports, whether that be there, you know, they're as young as junior high, high school, college, and even beyond? Um, the biggest thing is get involved. And however that is, you want to be a competitor, want to be a caster, want to be a coach, want to be manager, whatever it is, just get involved and do stuff. That's the nice aspect of esports is I've worked with players who live thousands of miles from me because they want to get involved and switch made online and just do it because it's so virtual. So the virtualized aspect of esports means you can just stick your hand up, say, I want to do something and then go do it. Either form your own team or jump in with the team somewhere else. And then at your school, if you're looking at competitive esports at schools, it's a lot about finding a staff sponsor who will fight the good fight for you. So whatever that may be, it's a lot about finding staff who want to do esports as much as you do. That's why I got my program off the ground at Glenwood is because I stuck my hand up my second day of my teacher training saying, I want to do esports programs. And they said, yes. And so it's finding coaches and staff to help support you as well. Awesome. Well, we just want to say thank you so much, Cora, for uh, talking to us all today. Um, all of the links and everything that uh, you've discussed, we will be putting into the comments of the, the YouTube recording that we will be posting tomorrow for everybody. So you'll get those, get those links. And yeah, we just want to say thank you again for, for talking to us today. Yeah, no problem. I'm very glad to be here. Thanks so much.